A six-year-old took a 32 caliber semi-automatic handgun to school with him. What could possibly go wrong? Kayla had been fatally shot by her six-year-old classmate, Diedrich Owens. Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sandy and here on Chronic Cases, we talk about all things true crime. This story begins on February 29th, 2000 and takes us all the way to Flint, Michigan. Kayla Renee Rowland, born May 12, 1993, was a six-year-old little girl from Mount Morris Township, Michigan, located in the east-central part of Michigan in Genesee County. The township is approximately a one-hour drive away from the greater Detroit area. Kayla Rowland was a first grader at Buell Elementary School in the Beecher Community School District, located in Mount Morris Township, Michigan, near Flint. Young Diedrich had a pretty hard life. His father, Diedrich Owen Sr., wasn't around. He was on a concrete and steel bars type of vacation. He was doing a bid for violating parole. Young Diedrich had previously lived with his mom, Tamarla, and his younger brother, and he was supposed to be going back to live with her again. I have two versions as to why Diedrich wasn't currently living with his mother. One is that she was preparing an apartment in Flint for the boys to be returned to her in February of 2001. The other is that she worked two jobs and made $175 a week, which wasn't enough to pay the rent and she was evicted. Either way, for the time being, her sons were currently living in a trap house. The house was a crack house and it belonged to her brother, Jamil James. There were often guns, obviously drugs passing through, so who knows what young Diedrich was being exposed to. Young Diedrich said that he had found the gun that morning at his uncle's house, underneath some blankets, inside a shoebox. Yep, I keep my loaded guns in a shoebox. Six-year-old Diedrich was now walking around with a semi-automatic in his hand. Diedrich was known to have behavioral issues, and he had to stay behind every day after school for swearing, giving people a finger, pinching, hitting. Just a few weeks before the shooting, he stabbed a girl with a pencil. Diedrich had previously attacked Kayla Rowland. Also, on the day prior to the murder, he tried to kiss Kayla, and Kayla was like, no, thank you. There is so much to this story. Chris Bowes, a seven-year-old classmate, claimed that Diedrich had punched him because he wouldn't give him his pickle. Then, on the morning of the shooting, Diedrich and his brother got into a fight with another seven-year-old classmate's uncle. Prior to murdering Kayla, Diedrich had threatened to shoot this classmate's uncle. And that very same day, he took the gun to school and murdered Kayla. On February 29, 2000, Diedrich brought a 32 caliber handgun and a knife to the school and during class changeover in front of 20 other students and a teacher while walking up the stairs he fatally shot Kayla Rowland. He walked up next to her, looked at her and said, I don't like you. And then he shot her. The bullet went into her right arm and hit a vital artery. At 1029 that morning Kayla was pronounced dead. She is deeply missed by her family, especially by her sister, Elizabeth Krasinski. We had 
understand a six-year-old girl, first grader, was shot. An elementary school shooting in Mount Morris, which is north of Flint. The shooter was a six-year-old boy. I remember being pulled out of school. I remember what class I was in when I got pulled out because I was scared because nobody told me why I was being pulled out. And once we got to the hospital, that's when my mom told us what had actually happened. And I didn't believe her. She told me my sister was dead. I didn't believe her. She, you know, wanted to make everybody laugh. I'm thinking, no, she's joking. She's joking. She's playing a trick on us. And she finally let us go inside the room where they had her. I remember walking over to the table. I remember you know, shaking her, like, hey, you know, you can wake up now, stop playing a trick on us, and she didn't wake up. So that was, the rest of that day was a real blur, a real flashback. I don't remember too much of it. Six-year-old Kayla Rowland was laid to rest. This shooting raising serious questions about kids and guns. I felt more empathy towards him when I got older and I found out more and more about his background. It was weird for us, like, you know, my brother, my sister, we, my, my dad, you know, he taught us to respect the weapon. He taught us that, you know, this, he just, he went about and he educated us. So when I found out that this little boy got a hold of this gun, I, I knew that it wasn't, like, there was something else behind that aspect. It is an irresponsibility on the parents' part, you know, for not, and then his, on the uncle's part, for not putting it where it should have been. And there's been so much push for the guns to be taken away that there's not enough push for the education about the guns. For me, that parents, well, you know, parents should take that initiative. Diedrich tossed the gun into a garbage can and then he ran and he hid in one of the bathrooms inside the school. You can tell something's not right here. He was found by a teacher in the corner of a washroom. Shortly after, he was taken into police custody. There was a search of Uncle James's house and they found a loaded pump action shotgun and a rock of cocaine. Diedrich was held in custody, but never charged. Police were only worried about where they were gonna place him and he ended up going to live with his auntie and his brother and his sister. With so many red flags in this case, please tell me how one adult did not intervene. Could Kayla's life have been spared? Diedrich literally stabbed another student days before he murdered Kayla. Okay, look, I know he's six years old and he's living in this crack den with his uncle and he may have seen things so there may have been an argument that went down. Maybe some shots were popped off and maybe he's wondering, is this how you handle things? Okay, this is how you handle things. He's obviously seen something. He's walking around semi-automatic and he knows how to use it. You know, he knew his way around a gun. And Kayla had to lose her life because of it. Diedrich was now the youngest school shooter in the United States of America. And still, he was not charged with Kayla's murder. You see, from what I read, in most U.S. states, six-year-olds are not liable for the crimes that they commit. And I guess the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office is just all hugs and rainbows and sunshine. Because the county prosecutor actually said to the general public, let's everybody collectively give Diedrich a big hug. Therapy might have been the better option there. What do you think? I think this kid was screwed from birth. It's shitty. I don't think he had any good role models. It, there's the auntie, but we don't know. Like, was she in his life prior? Or was it... And I hate to say this. Was she getting a check from the government to keep them at her home? Why did he go to the crack house before he went to her house? devil's advocate. I'm not taking sides. I'm just pointing out blaringly obvious facts. Did you know that way back in 1893, the U.S. Supreme government actually ruled that children under the age of seven could not be guilty of a felony or punished for any capital offense? 
for within that age range, a child is presumed incapable of committing a crime. Did you know that? I did not know that. 1893. And laws have not changed. So if Diedrich isn't doing time for this, who is? In a case like this, who would be held responsible? Uncle Jamal James was. He did own the 32 caliber that was used to murder Kayla. It was not properly stored. He pled no contest to involuntary manslaughter and spent two years and five months in prison before he was released on probation. What happened to little Diedrich Owens? According to court records, he had been convicted of a felony at the age of 18. I had hope for you, man. He had a second chance there. Like, At the time, Kayla Rowland had been believed to be the youngest school shooting victim in the United States until the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in December of 2012. Buell Elementary School closed in 2002 due to financial hardship. The campus was heavily damaged by arson in 2005, and then it was torn down in 2009. Let me know your thoughts. What are your thoughts about little Diedrich? Do you think that he should have been held accountable to some degree at the age of six? Do you think he knew what he was doing? Or do you think he saw something at his uncle's house? My adult brain is telling me that something may have gone down in that crack house and that six-year-old Diedrich thought, okay, so this is how you handle a problem. You don't just find a gun under blankets in a shoebox. He knew it was there. He knew his way around a gun at the age of six. This should scare you. This is all my opinion. I'm thinking maybe he saw something and in the mind of a little six-year-old, You do as you see. And this is why Kayla lost her life. Do you think Kayla's death could have been prevented? That's the real question here, isn't it? Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. This one was really interesting to me because legislation hasn't changed in the U.S. since 1893. I don't know. Again, let me know your thoughts. And if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch something else, here you go. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, if you're enjoying the content, here you go. I will see you in the next one, you guys. Take care. Peace.